Well, good morning, YouTube. I've got my uh, power shelf running here. I've been uh, using it outside on my solar battery bank running the iCharger 1010B+. I've got up to now eight packs in the uh, power shelf. So I've got down below there's a 4S pack and then there's a second 4S pack on the top. During the day I would uh, connect this charger up to my 12 volt battery bank and then I'd run the output to either one or two, three or four of the packs of cells, charge them up and then overnight I would put this charger into discharge mode and this device has what's called a regenerative discharge function so it actually can pump the discharge power back into the battery that it's powered off of and then that way I could discharge and measure capacity on one of these packs overnight and not waste this energy actually pump it back into my solar battery bank what I found is a 3 amp discharge with the regenerative function would just about equal my overnight load on the 12 volt battery bank so the idea is I could discharge out of this charger and power my overnight loads which in the winter aren't quite as heavy I don't have the attic fans running for example and things like that the other thing I found was I could actually set up a 4S pack with a 3 amp discharge that was able to take my solar battery bank from about 90 percent state of charge so if there was a cloudy day I could dump 30 amp hours of lithium batteries into my 200 amp hour lead acid bank and that would charge it up if it was discharged it was kind of limiting because you could only do that if the battery bank didn't get fully charged during the day. You can imagine this regenerative discharge is like a pumped storage water facility. You pump the water uphill while you're discharging and then during the day you take the water out of the reservoir and pump it back into the batteries. But if the, if the reservoir is full, you can't pump any more current into it. So I came up with a different idea. So I added this banana jack, and I have the eye charger plugged into the banana jacks. And then the banana jacks I have running down. If we can swing down there, they go down here to the bottom 4S pack. So I have the bottom 4S pack is powering the eye charger and then I have the eye charger just hooked up to the top 1S pack so this is the latest pack I pulled out of my collection of cells so I did a 3 amp discharge got this capacity now what I'm doing is actually a 5 amp charge discharge cycle so it's just finishing up the charge cycle now you can see the current is dropping off so I want to see what the capacity is at 5 amps but the idea is right now I'm charging so currents flowing up this wire into the charger and then into these cells once they reach full charge the current will come out of these four cells back into the 4S pack down on the bottom so what I find a charge cycle, since I have 4S down below and a 1S pack that I'm charging, that's about 25%. I think you, you lose about 10% through the charger and charging process. So you take 25% out, you put about 20% back in. So the, the main pack loses about 5% capacity each time. But the neat thing that lets me do is I can run capacity tests on these around the clock now. I don't have to have uh, some place to dump this energy. I'm basically dumping the energy back into the bottom four cells 
and then using that energy to charge the top four cells. The other thing this lets me do is I'm inside the house now and I was also running into some strange variations in capacity. I had anywhere from 28 up to over 31 amp hours. So I was getting about a 10% variation where my original testing on the individual pairs of cells was much closer than that. I was only plus or minus like 1% versus plus or minus 5%. So I was seeing a lot more variation. I think some of that was due to testing these cells last summer and fall when it was relatively warm outside, maybe 30 degrees C. And now I was doing these discharge tests overnight in the winter and it was much colder. One thing I'm hoping about doing this inside is I can uh, keep the temperature a little more constant and get a little more reliable numbers because next thing I need to do is try to swap some cells in and out of these packs to try to bring everything down to maybe 30 amp hours. Right here I have, here's my charging input, here's my temperature sensor, I have that shoved between a couple of cells. I just added this uh, balance board over here that's got two, three, four, five, and 6S connectors to plug into the iCharger, which only has a 10S connector here. So this way it lets me plug various balance cables in without having to unplug and replug this connector all the time. Then the other thing the iCharger has, it's got a USB port over here. You probably can't see it behind the uh, cable there, which has a, a TTL serial to USB converter in it. And let me show you what that looks like over on the PC screen here. So I'll cut over to that. Okay, YouTube, this is a look at the LogView application. It's available separately. I'll put a link down in the video description. But this was included with the iCharger 1010B Plus battery charger along with the special USB cable. So here I'm looking at my input voltage, the charging current, and then the cell 1 voltage. I'm only charging one cell as we saw in the battery shelf. So I'm using four cells to charge. So you can see here my input voltage started out around 15.04 and it dropped down here 1493 and then as the charging current went down the input voltage recovered a little bit. Here's the charging current in green. I was up here at 5 amps and once we hit 4 volts per cell, which is the red line, we dropped into the constant voltage phase and then the red is the cell voltage it climbed up from uh, let's see we were 3.92 and then it climbed up to right at 4 volts so that's pretty neat you can monitor the full charging parameters I can for instance look at uh, the battery temperature here the light blue color is the uh, battery temperature. Here's the purple is the charger temperature. So it peaked at the 5 amps and then has gradually tapered off. I think that's pretty neat. I can watch this. I can also look at it in table form. Yeah, I thought I'd show you the uh, update on that power shelf. It's working pretty good. If you have any comments or questions, put that in the comment section down below the video description. I'll put any uh, follow-up videos, a link in the upper right-hand corner. Subscribe to the channel for updates. And as always, thanks for watching.